Okay, thanks for the interesting talk about the spam. Um, somehow you did manage to actually go over your time instead of under it, so... Um, so I'm going to talk about developing SMW extensions. Uh, I first quickly want to introduce myself. Um, I'm Jeroen. I'm currently working for Wikimedia Germany on the Wikidata project. Um, but over the last three years, I've been working on SMW and related extensions in my free time and as a consultant. Um, yeah. Um, before I start, um, I'd like to get some idea of um, the audience because right now I have no clue um, how much developers there are here and w what the technical level is. So, who of you consider yourself to be developers? Uh, please raise your hands. Okay, and uh, who of you have done work with MetaWiki before, uh, development work? Okay, well, I'm actually surprised there are so many people. Um, that's good. Um, so I have my presentation on the SMW Wiki itself using one of our new result formats, which is actually not released yet, so it's really the first time I'm trying it out. Um, you don't need to bother with the small text above. Um, I'm trying to make it in such a way that I can reuse it in the future and um, that people can also just use it as a sort of quick reference. Um, a lot of the bullet points are linked to the actual documentation, um, which I will uh, also be going through. Um, so if you want, you can just go to the page. Uh, there is a short URL there, which you can uh, use. And then you can follow along with me. Um, Depending on how much time and interest we have, I might uh, do some uh, live demos as well, like writing a simple result format and things like that. Um, and if at any point you have uh, questions, um, if I'm explaining, well, not sufficiently explaining something, then um, please just ask. It's sometimes difficult for me to uh, estimate what people know or not. Mm. Well, yeah. So, um, in order to best understand the talk, you need to have some idea about, uh, well, what SMW is, which most of you already know, I guess, right? And um, some basic notions about programming. Um, when you actually want to start doing media wiki development or uh, write SMW extensions, then it's, uh, of course, good to have some knowledge about the actual programming languages involved, which are PHP and JavaScript, um, and with the version control system, which is used, which is uh, at the moment Git. Um, so, MediaWiki, um, just a quick rehearsal for those um, who are not really familiar with the software itself and how it's developed. Um, it's written in PHP and JavaScript. It's open source, uh, the general, um, yeah, the GPL v2. Um, and it's, yeah, go ahead. Oh, um, it's bit.ly, uh, so bit.ly slash um, yeah, it's something simple, but I forgot it, even so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, you can also just hit the wiki and look in recent changes, you probably find it. Um, so, um, MetaWiki itself and um, most of the extensions are hosted on Git repositories um, by the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the organization behind uh, Wikipedia. And um, they also coordinate most of the MediaWiki development itself. Um, most of the core developers are hired by the foundation or somehow associated with it. Um, But uh, there are also many third parties, uh, other people that are not associated with the foundation that do MediaWiki development and then have the repositories there. This has a lot of advantages over just putting your code somewhere because if you, well, some people think that open source involves just publishing your code under an open license, but this is not true, right? Um, you need to make sure that your code is visible and that you're integrating a bit with the community um, uh, of the 
relevant open source project, in this case MediaWiki. Um, so yeah, um, a few of the reasons to have your code in these repositories are that um, <coughs> other people will more easily be able to see your code. Um, also, if you develop via these, you will typically use the code review tool of the foundation, uh, via which you can get comments of other developers on what you're doing, which is extremely helpful. And it integrates with uh, Translate Wiki, which is a platform for translators that um, translates MediaWiki and extensions completely for free. So if you're writing your extension and you properly use the correct um, internationalization internationalization mechanisms in your code and you put it in these repositories then people will just go translate your extension into many different languages which is really neat to see. Um, and there are quite a few extensions. Um, I actually checked the, the category um, and there are over 2,200 extensions listed on MediaWiki.org. Um, there are probably more because not everybody bothers to create a page there. Uh, yeah. Um, so when you want to develop an extension uh, or do any kind of MediaWiki development, the first thing to do is well get the code uh, via Git because yeah. You want to work with the version control system and not just with the, the plain code. Um, if you just want to have a quick look at the code or you want to deploy it or just do some simple hacking and not publish it back, you can just get um, the read-only clone. Um, you can see the URL here, um, which is pretty easy if you have Git set up, of course, and know how it works. Um, yeah, if you're interested in starting to do MediaWiki development and maybe follow some of the things I'm doing uh, later, then you should probably try to get this, um, although it might not really work on the conference Wi-Fi. It's uh, over 100 megabytes and takes a while to clone. Um, but if you're serious about the development, then you want to get developer access so you can actually push the changes back to the repository um, for which you need an account on the system. Um, so you first need to request developer access. This is done on Wiki and the link is provided here. Um, this is a process that at the moment takes some time. So it's not something you can do now and then continue with because it probably takes a few days for somebody to actually um, give you this access. Um, and then you also need to set up a small tool called uh, Git Review that um, well, facilitates pushing changes to the um, uh, code review system of the foundation, uh, which I will show later. Um, and once you've done all that and made your changes, you can just submit it back. And uh, yeah, if, if you have your own extension, then you can just set it up um, as you want. You can um, allow everybody to just contribute, but you can also specify that um, only you can merge in things so that people can submit a change, but that you then first need to review it. So um, yeah. Um, so, getting a MediaWiki extension is very similar. They are hosted at the same location. Um, yeah, getting Semantic MediaWiki is uh, pretty easy. Uh, it's a uh, not too big repository, so you can just clone it now if you want. And um, yeah, always nice to have if you just want to have a quick look. You can grab through it or whatever. Um, and if you just want to have Semantic MediaWiki run, you need MediaWiki itself, of course. Um, you need Semantic MediaWiki and you need um, Validator, which is a parameter processing library, which is uh, currently the only other dependency of Semantic MediaWiki. Um, it's, of course, possible that instead of trying, uh, wanting to contribute to an existing extension, you want to create your own. 
um, in which case you need to request your own repository, which then somebody uh, goes and make after a few days, hopefully. Um, but since, well, since the process is in Git, this is not that much of a blocker, even if you want to start immediately, because you can just create a Git repository, work in it, even push to GitHub or where, whatever other Git server, and then whenever this repository is created, just add it as remote and push to there and switch where you're working, right? And I already mentioned that there are different levels of access, so, um, yeah, you can choose this for yourself, uh, how you want people to be able to contribute. And that's also something to keep in mind for other extensions. Um, yeah, this is just the link to the documentation. Um, yeah, it's quite extensive actually. Mm. on Wi-Fi. Yeah, so um, Minawiki.org has quite some documentation on developing extensions and all the things you should know about. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll quickly go over some of the extension points of Minawiki. Um, so you have some idea of what you can do on top of it. Um, the first one is the, the API. Um, which um, allows you to create extensions in two ways. Um, the first way um, is by just using the API um, from the outside and um, building an application or an, a tool on top of the API using the existing API functionality. So, um, yeah. Who here is not familiar with the MediaWiki API? Has no idea what it is, I mean. Yes, who is not familiar with it? Okay, so you all know what it is? Okay, great. Um, That's a bad policy. I mean, by default, people answer the worst thing. So, no one's familiar. Right. Um, The second uh, way that the API is an extension point is that extensions can um, extend the API by adding additional API modules. Um, for instance, SMW is doing this by having an uh, ask API module by which you can run ask queries. Um, so if you're creating an extension that adds additional information or something that you want to be able to look up query or people to add it, then uh, API is a great way for this. Um, MediaWiki also has a ton of hooks, PHP hooks, um, which um, allow you to run code in various parts of the environment. And um, yeah, just to give you an idea, there are quite a few hooks if you look at the, the list here. Um, so bef before you start writing something, it's always useful to have a quick list at this. Um, so you have an idea of what's out there. There's no need to, to memorize all the hooks because, well, there are just so many. Uh, but if you look here and have a look at just the, the big sections of the things you can do, um, yeah. Um, you can also extend the, the wiki text um, in various ways. Uh, one way is via parser hooks and tag functions. Uh, these are, uh, for instance, the ask parser function of um, SMW, where you can just specify additional behavior rights. Um, I don't think this needs much explaining. Um, then um, another point are the special pages, which um, are pages that are special because um, unlike regular wiki pages, they 
do not allow you to edit an article, but they provide a kind of special functionality, um, such as, for instance, showing recent changes or um, showing you a form to edit something. And you can also do stuff with skins, but yeah. And um, if you want a comprehensive guide on how to um, do MetaWiki development and how to get started, there is the How to Become a MetaWiki Hacker page on MetaWiki.org, which links to all the things you could possibly want to know, including stuff on just PHP development and MySQL and all these things, right? So SMW also has a bunch of extension points. Um, we have our own API for querying um, since uh, the 1.7 release, I think. We have a Ask API by which you can run queries. Um, you can also do this via special ask. Um, and since, well, uh, as of the 1.8 release, which will be out hopefully very soon now, um, the Ask API will be stable because, yeah. Um, you should ask Marcus. I'm basically waiting on stuff he's doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I suspect the most popular extension point by far that we have are the result formats. Um, Marcus already mentioned this in his talk earlier that it's pretty easy to write the result format. Um, so a lot of people do it because it's cool to have nice visualizations, right? Um, and we actually have quite some new visualizations. Uh, quite a few people have been doing effort in this area, writing new ones, and one guy, um, M.W. James, has written a dozen or so great new formats over the last year um, that I will be showing off in a presentation on Friday, I think. Um, so everybody know what I mean with the result format, right? So uh, it's the, the thing you put in the ask queries, uh, the format parameter, so if it's a table or a calendar or a map or whatnot. Um, yeah. Um, okay, uh, I think I have a live demo thing in my presentation later, uh, if I'm not confused about it. Um, another point where you can extend SMW are the data values. Um, so, you probably know that SMW has different types of data. You, can, you have uh, just strings, you have numbers, you have booleans, uh, you have geographic coordinates, all these kinds of things. And you can extend this, um, and I'm not sure it's very well known because um, geographic coordinates is actually the only thing that's done on top of SMW with uh, extending in this fashion uh, in semantic maps. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'll come back to this in more detail later on. Um, you can also extend the store uh, we have, uh, the storage backend, um, where you can do additional indexing in some way, uh, additional retrieval. Um, yeah, you, by, by default, it's. Um, done in MySQL, but you can implement uh, it in another backend if you want. Um, and there are also some hooks there that allow you to, on every um, update of our data, to do additional things. So uh, an example of this is the semantic watch list extension, which looks at changes and writes these to another table. Um, so you can easily get the wa um, a watch list with structured diffs of the semantic data. Um, and we also have our own list of hooks, um, which are sadly enough not really documented on the wiki, but you can easily find them um, by just uh, searching on WF run hooks in the code base. Uh, if you're a developer, uh, yeah. WF run hooks is the mechanism used by MediaWiki to, to run hooks. So if you search on this, you get all the hooks 
that are defined, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, definitely let us know. Um, not sure that people just go look in the code because if you don't know the code base, you don't know where exactly, well, um, this is very difficult. It's a lot easier if you have a hook list with the actual functionality and it's still nice to get, just grab through it and get a list of all the hooks and have some idea of what's already provided. Okay, yeah, and help documenting the hooks is also welcome if you feel like doing that. <laughs> um, so creating your own SMW extension is really no different than creating a regular MediaWiki extension. Um, it's the same process because it's hosted at the same place. We obviously want to integrate with the regular MediaWiki community as much as possible. So nothing special there. So, um, I'll do a quick demo of um, writing a result printer so you just have some idea of what's involved um, and what this looks like. Hmm. Okay, let me first show um, the documentation because we actually have quite some documentation on this particular subject because um, a lot of people used to contribute code to these, but rather low quality code and not really informed about how it worked. So this ended up being quite a pain to maintain. So, um, yeah. Um, on the wiki, uh, on this page, you you have quite some documentation on all the steps, um, everything you need to implement, and also quite some general advice on what and what not to do based on what people did wrong in the past. Um, yeah. Um, for, for the most part, it's extremely simple. The, the only slightly more involved part is um, where you actually loop over the results um, you get in the result printer um, because it's a, basically a three-dimensional array and if you don't know what's in it, it can be a bit confusing. Um, okay, let me maybe first explain how the result printers fit into SMW. So if you run a query, um, it's handled by SMW, uh, then a result is constructed and then this result is handled to um, the query processor, which determines, um, wh which looks at which format is used and then um, initializes a result printer based on this format and then handles the um, result of the query to this printer so the printer can visualize the result. Okay. Um, most of the, the formats we currently have are either in SMW itself um, or in the extension called semantic result formats, which probably most of you are familiar with if you've used SMW before. 
um, and I went ahead and created um, a new format here, which is called um, demo. It's prefixed with SRF standing for semantic result format, which we're currently using since it's still compatible with PHP 5.2, which doesn't have namespaces, but we'll change this at some point. Um, right, so here's the file. Um, a printer doesn't need to have a lot to work. Um, it needs to have a name. Um, this thing here is um, MetaWiki's way of internationalizing messages. So this is a message key. And um, this, after you pass it to this function, um, it looks in the list of translations and gets you the actual uh, text for the message key. Um, then the only two other things you need to implement are um, the the thing that actually constructs the results. So it, it gets the result of the query and then needs to return some output, which can be either wiki text or HTML, depending on uh, the context you're in. And um, I think this one is actually optional. Um, allows you to specify a list of parameters, which the result format also accepts. So um, by default, uh, the ask parser function or um, the ask API accept a number of parameters, which include um, format, uh, limit, um, sort. Um, but each format can add additional parameters to this to uh, allow users to customize the actual output. Um, examples of this are um, a CSS class for tables or the width of a graph for the, the markers used on a map, all these kind of things. Um, so I went ahead here and um, just defined one parameter. Um, yeah, we have this declarative way of defining parameters. And this basically says um, I have a parameter with the name demo. Um, it has a default value of smwcon. And um, you also should specify a message because the parameters are displayed at various places with additional documentation, such as, for instance, in a special ask. Um, I can actually show this. So um, if you're on ask, um, then for all of the parameters, you have um, such additional descriptions, um, which are coming from the message um, specified um, here. Um, so th this is, of course, a very simple demo, because I'm just returning a string and using the value of one parameter and not actually looking at what the result is. So it doesn't matter. Uh, and um, once you've done this, you need to register the format, which is pretty easy. Um, in semantic result formats, we have our own array here. Um, but if you're writing your own extension, it, you, you just add it to this array, where you add the name of the format. Which, you, which is the value you specify for the format parameter, and then the class that handles it. Uh, so the class, yeah. Um, so let me just quickly do that. And um, in case of semantic result formats, not all of the registered formats are enabled by default because we have some experimental ones or some obsolete ones that have issues and um, not everybody wants to use anyway. Um, so this is in the settings file where you then need to um, also list your um, the name of your format. So in our case, it's demo. Um, and if I go back to the wiki now, um, I should, oh wait, wrong wiki. <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, Okay. Um, I forgot one thing, which is to actually register the class itself in the, the MediaWiki autoloader, um, which is also pretty simple. Um, yeah. Yeah, indeed. Um, so now the format is hopefully registered. And yes, we can see here that the format is indeed registered. And the reason why it shows up here um, with the message key is that because we have not provided any trans, well, not provided any English version of the message itself. Um, I can quickly do this for demonstration purposes because this is relevant for any MediaWiki development. And you should really use the internationalization system. Uh, a lot of people don't really know about it or don't care, but please use it. Um, yeah. So um, this is the internationalization file of um, semantic result formats. And um, as you can see here, we have all these message keys pointing to their actual um, text. And then um, lower in the file, um, you actually have um, the translations in the other languages. So now it should show up as demo, and indeed it does. So now let's try to use the format. Um, so here is uh, just a rather dumb query getting all the modification dates. Um, so um, I'll just use the format. Um, So as you can see, there is um, the very simple string um, saying hello SMWCon. Um, so SMWCon, because this was the default we ad added here. Uh, here, yeah. But we can also, of course, as a user, specify the value for this parameter. I think I called it demo. So. Uh, now it should say hello there. Yeah. Um, yeah, th this is just the most basic thing. You can add some other stuff as well, but this is pretty much covered in the, the documentation page I showed uh, earlier. So are there any questions related to writing result formats? Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay, I can try to explain it, although, to be honest, um, I, I tend to get confused myself and have to look at other implementations. Um, but yeah, that's also generally um, advice. Um, if you're creating such an extension, um, because there are already a lot of result formats, you can just look at how they are doing things. But just beware that there are some old formats and some not so good written formats. So 
just copying something uh, ha has the risk that you're actually copying the wrong thing to do, right? Um, so pick one of the newer formats. Um, Uh, yeah, I, I think going over the um, query result is a bit specific, um, and I don't think it's of general interest to the audience, so um, I'd be happy to explain this to you in person. Um, and of course, you're always free to ask questions, uh, development questions on our development mailing list. Right. Um, I we, we did not have documentation on writing data values yet, and I cr started creating a page, and then I realized that we're actually in the process of refactoring this from the bottom up, so it will probably be different in a uh, half year from now. Um, so I'm going to spare you the um, current um, details. Um, but just explain it on a conceptual level, um, what uh, data values do. Um, they used to, in SMW 1.5 and earlier, do a lot of things. Um, so they were responsible for parsing values provided by the user in Wikitext. So for instance, if you have, uh, for instance, for the Boolean data value, um, it would have a method where it looks if you're writing yes or true or something like that, then it's true and otherwise it's false. Um, it's also was responsible for doing the opposite, um, for turning it back into user output, um, responsible for um, doing serialization for database purposes. And the fourth thing is that it's was also responsible for actually representing the value itself, so being a boolean or a number or whatever. Um, and this is the, the main refactor we did in um, SMW 1.6, um, where this got split up, um, the value representation part and database serialization got split up. So now this thing is basically responsible for formatting and parsing and it contains an object that's responsible for representing the value and doing the database serialization. Um, so w what you could um, possibly do is um, create a temperature value, although we might actually have one, I'm not sure. Um, and then add special handling for this, so if somebody enters degrees in Fahrenheit or something, uh, then you can, then the system can understand what it actually means and then you can display it in various ways and yeah. Um, so what we're going to change here in the future is just split it up more. So we have dedicated classes for um, parsing and formatting, which are completely generic and also dedicated classes for representing the values themselves. And this is um, 
we, I'm actually working on this right now as a shared library, which we'll also be using in Wikibase, which is the um, extension for Wikidata. And these components will also have used in several other extensions. Um, so this should um, decrease maintenance costs in SMW and just make it um, more solid than it's now and easier to extend and understand in general. Um, another thing you can do is uh, writing additional form inputs. Uh, this is not really um, an extension point of SMW since the functionality is provided by semantic forms. So um, I'm guessing that most people here know semantic forms. It's, after all, the most popular SMW extension, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so it, it allows you to edit templates with forms. And it has various um, types of input fields for editing um, different kinds of, of values. So if you have a list of values, then it will show a drop down. And if you have a Boolean, then it will show a checkbox and this kind of stuff. And it allows you to define your own such inputs. Uh, an example of this being um, semantic maps adds an input where you can just click on a map or um, do a search uh, that gets geocoded and then you, you have your coordinates without manually having to enter coordinates there ever. Um, yeah. Um, I'm over time already, so I'm not going to go deep in this. Um, yeah. So now I'll round up the presentation with just giving you some pointers and some general advice. Um, you can find um, yeah, how to get started with SMW development, basically what I told you now in the Programmer's Guide to SMW, which is on the wiki. Um, we also have our developer documentation uh, listed in the developer documentation category. It's not that much, but what we have is quite helpful. And this also includes um, an architecture guide, which covers some of the, the important aspects of SMW to know if you're uh, developing with it. And of course, you can always get help on our developer mailing list or the IRC channel. Uh, don't be afraid to ask things. Uh, yeah. Um, and yeah, finally, I just want to give um, some channel advice um, because I see quite some people ending up reinventing the wheel or just doing things that are not generally useful if you know about um, how this stuff actually works. So if you have an ID, then ask the community what they think about it. Um, so. You, Um, yes, an ID for a new result format, but um, especially if you're creating a new kind of functionality. Yeah, a new extension. Um, so because it can be, this is already done. Um, and even if you look for it just on mediawiki.org, you might not find it because not everybody bothers to properly publish their things. Um, and you might also be solving uh, a problem that can be solved a lot, well, um, creating a feature you need to solve a problem, but uh, that there is a more easy way to solve the problem that you don't know about. So, um, And also, it's always nice to just um, make use of the experience of the developers already there and their knowledge. Um, just ask them um, about the general uh, things you're doing, how, how you're implementing it on a high level. Um, I think a lot of people are a bit afraid of doing this because, well, um, those scary developers that know all the stuff, um, they might think of you like a lowly person that doesn't know it all yet, but that's how everybody starts, right? And um, yeah, we, we don't have everything documented, so some things you just have to ask. Um, and also, since we switched to Git and now have uh, the code review tool, Garrett, um, it's actually a lot easier to, um, if you have your code on the Wikimedia Foundation repositories, to 
have other people look at it. Um, if you push your code there and you're doing something obviously wrong, such as not escaping your database queries or um, not using the internationalization system, people will yell at you. Um, sometimes this might be a bit um, harsh in a way, but um, the people uh, intended good, so don't take it personally. Uh, I, I think a lot of third-party developers that are not used to the system, sometimes um, they do the effort to, to, to put it there instead of just hosting it somewhere else and then they get comments, oh no, you're doing this wrong and that wrong, but um, in the end it makes your code better and um, that's what everybody wants, right? If they yell at you, then you get, you get feedback. Yes. Yes, exactly. Because that's when you skip the third. Uh, that happens when you skip the third taboo. Yeah, and um, it, it's um, of course it's a very public review system. So there are people that are sometimes nitpicking a bit, or just making a problem. But yeah. Um, you can easily deal with this, uh, so don't be scared off too easily. And read the, the developer documentation before you start, or at least skim through it. Um, MediaWiki has uh, style guidelines and things you should generally do because otherwise people will not be really happy with your code. And um, if you want pe other developers to contribute and perhaps even help with maintaining your code, this is very important. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, that's all I think. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions? So um, if you're a developer yourself and are looking for technical advice, then you can ask on the developer mailing list. But if you're um, a user and you either want to just trick somebody in writing it for you, I mean, if it's a good idea and other people also think it's a good idea, somebody might actually just implement it because they also realize they want it, right? Um, and yeah, the, the user mailing list is a good place to ask for this. And if you want commercial support, there are um, several people um, that... Um, Yeah, if you mention you're uh, willing to pay for this, then um, it, you, you probably will get a reaction. Um, but yeah, there is no fixed list because most of the people doing this are um, not doing this as well. Nobody's doing it as their main job. So the availability really varies uh, between different people. But yeah. Any more questions? Um, um, so are you asking for a roadmap or what? Oh, yeah. Um, we don't really have something like this. I actually looked at this in the past. Um, but at that point, at least, we did not really get traction on this at all. Um, there are a few f features, like one or two, that really a lot of people want, and where several people were willing to pay. and where contribution happened, but this happened uh, via private coordination uh, and not via public lists. Um, 
yeah, I think the the community is slightly too small for this for this to work su successfully. Okay, um, you can always ask, uh, well, if you come up with a question, you can always ask me later. Uh, I'll be around for the whole conference. So thanks for your, yeah. Well, okay, thanks.